Welcome to Science Unlocked, the podcast that unlocks the secrets of the world around us. Join us as we dive deep into the fascinating world of science. Welcome back to Science Unlocked. My name is Becca. I'm the host. And with me today, I have John. John, you are kind of famous. I, I like to think just famous, just, but, but no, you're right. You're yeah, right. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You're no, very you're right. famous. <laughs> uh, John, uh, I know you, but our listeners, our viewers, they don't know you, so I'll let you introduce yourself. Ah, I'm John Rossi. I'm the host of the Rossifari podcast, which is a zoo and conservation themed podcast. It's probably my favorite podcast right now. Mine so. too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I want to ask you about your podcast. So, what inspired you to start the podcast, and what do you love most about sharing? you know, the stories. Sure. So um, I am a professional drummer. That's like what I do for a living. I tour around the country doing that. And uh, as I was on tour, I found that there's a lot of toxicity in the the, the entertainment yeah. industry, and I'm not a huge fan of that. And um, even though I love a lot of the people I've worked with, I also would find that when you are on a bus with them all day and playing all night, it can be a lot. <laughs> so I started making it a point to visit as many zoos and aquariums and, and things like that as, as I could. And um, I, I fell in love with, with not only the places, but I would talk to keepers and I'd be like, what's your red panda's name? You know, wait, what? You guys have baby Binturon? Ah! And, <laughs> baby uh, Binturons? <laughs> Who has those? <laughs> I don't know. And, um, and I would just ask like, oh yeah, you know, what are their names? And I would start getting stories and, and keepers, I don't know if you know this, but keepers really like to talk about their animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so as I would um, get these stories, I was like so inspired. And I, I started looking for a podcast that shares these stories. Yeah. I figured it existed. I figured, you know, I want to find this. And there wasn't one. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I wish I could start one, but I can't because I don't know how to podcast and I'm on the road all the time. And then COVID happened. Ooh. Yes. And all of my gigs went flying out the window. And I lost literally like a year of already booked work right away. Ooh. And um, I was sitting at home and I was like, I need to do something so I don't go insane. And uh, so I decided to, to learn how to do the podcast thing. Yeah. And I did. And it, it started as a COVID project. I thought it might make it six weeks. And uh, we're in our fourth season. That's awesome. So uh, how, how many... I mean, that's three years, right? Yeah. That's three years of podcasting. That's incredible. Yeah, it's been a blast. And I, you know, I know I, we've been on the podcast yeah, a few times. A few times. Just a couple times. Yeah. Uh, maybe I've made an appearance a couple of times too. You, you did commandeer my podcast. <laughs> yes. Literally, literally would reach across, steal a microphone and just start talking when I was interviewing other people. Look. I'm just saying. You, you know, I think you need to do a podcast where you interview the like PR marketing people. I have. There's some really good ones. I'd love yeah. to have you on for a full yeah, episode. Yeah, that would be fun. I think it's fascinating. It's, it's a lot of fun. You know, you, I love your podcast because you tell these stories and you let the keepers tell their stories. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important. And I know people want to hear that. Um, I get that a lot whenever I'm posting on social media. Um, you know, people always want to know the animals' names. Right. And they want to know what the keepers do day to day. Will's got a great series where it's a day in the life. Mm -hmm. And so he just follows the keepers around. I'll tell you, one of my favorites is Mike's. I think we talked about this when we were recording. Yeah, yeah. And Mike's he's, amazing. he's just dropping his keys. Uh, <laughs> Will had a key drop count. I think it was like in the 50s. <laughs> Mike just drops his keys. He did That's it with amazing. me the other day trying to open something. But. <laughs> Um, so how many zoos and aquariums have you been to for the podcast? So for the podcast, I think I'm right under 70 facilities wow. right now. But in my travels and in doing yeah. all of this, um, I'm, I've just hit 172. Wow. Um, and it's zoos, aquariums, and also like conservation organizations yeah. that will open up their doors or whatever, you know. Um, and yeah, so, so, so yeah, 172. And um, all you know, to the best of my ability, all accredited. Um, there have been a few that I like early on wanted to kind of check out and I was yeah. like, eh, I want to go the, especially AZA accreditation, but also ZAA is yeah. great. Um, and then, um, you know, with the, with the conservation organizations, there's not always that, but I still look into them to make yeah. sure that they have good practices yeah. and, and all of That's that. That's always important. I like that you're sharing not only the stories, but you're sharing the stories from these accredited facilities. Mm -hmm. So, um, what are some of your favorite experiences that you've had, not only for the show, but you know, just as a guest at the zoos too. Sure. So one of the things that really inspired me to start the podcast was that like, if you talk to keepers and if the timing is right and if your vibe is right and all that stuff, they'll help you out if they can tell that you're really passionate about animals. Yeah. Before I started the podcast, before I ever had like behind the scenes access for reasons, um, I got to meet two red panda cubs um, at the Cincinnati Zoo. Uh, I got to see them in their nest box. Adorable. It was insane. I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> I 
could not believe that happened. I got to hold a fennec fox because oh. I was talking to a keeper and saying how much I loved their fennec foxes. And they were like, oh, these aren't even the best ones. We have one behind the scenes who's this old lady who's adorable. And I was like, that's amazing. And she's like, you want to meet her? And I was like, I do. I do want to meet. <laughs> yes, to, I do. Yes, I like, do. yes, I do. And I had some other really cool experiences. Um, and those are very meaningful to me uh, just because it shows how cool like the keepers were being and how much your own passion can can help you have those yeah. experiences. Now, you know, I go to a place and I go as the podcast and <laughs> I um, I get to do cool things. And that is still very meaningful. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest things that has really impacted me is is the baby animals that I've gotten to see. Um, I'm very in love with with uh, baby animals. They're I mean who Same. who yeah. isn't who right? doesn't yeah. love baby animals? But I mean be... you know getting to see the bintlets here, getting to see the the panda cubs here or yep. the pandlets as I like the call them. I love that um, you call them all, pandlets. All baby animals just get a lit <laughs> on my podcast. Yeah, yep, all of it. <laughs> Yeah, and get, getting to see Uncle Larry, but also um, I got to um, hold a, a red panda cub, a, a young red panda cub um, at a different facility. It was incredible. And I've seen, um, you know, a juvenile sea turtle that was yeah. like this oh. big. And, and um, I've hung out with tree kangaroo joeys and stuff like that. And there's just something about the babies yeah. that like, all animals are amazing, yeah. but baby animals are baby animals. But, I mean, they're adorable, yeah. especially with the, look. The keepers are going to get me for this because they're going to hear me say this, but the bentlets, in my opinion, the red pandas, adorable. Mm -hmm. The yeah. cutest things on the planet. Mm -hmm. Baby hippo, also equally mm -hmm. the cutest thing on the planet. The bentlets are different. Yes. Because they are like tiny miniature versions it's of the adults. It's weird how like they are binturongs. Yes. But shrunk. Yeah, they're just like, it's like, yeah. honey, I shrunk the binturong. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> but like the you know, because the they're all cute separately mm -hmm. for different reasons. Like the hippo, adorable, tiny little avocado, little tater tot. I love her to death. Mm -hmm. Little wrinkles, little rolls, love it all. Panda, pa pandalets, as you like to call yeah. it, the red pandas. Pandalets, yes. Uh, they're just cute. They're I, they're I, also not red though, which yeah. is weird. Like they're very cute, but they look like a black and white photograph <laughs> of what you would think a red pandlet would look like. So like it's a little weird, yeah. but in a good way. They're cute. But yeah. yeah, now that they're starting to get their color, yeah. now they're getting extra just, adorable. Just wait, John, just wait. You'll see later. You'll see later. You'll see later. Um you know, and I'm sure that many people have probably seen the video. The video. The the video. Yeah. The, and you posted a couple too on yeah, yeah, social media. Ones, yeah. Um so you were drumming for an elephant. Yes. What was that like? And what zoo was that at again? So that was at Buttonwood Park Zoo, Buttonwood Zoo. yeah, which is up Buttonwood. in uh, Massachusetts. Wonderful place. I need to go. Yeah, <laughs> you do. Yes. And um, so the the story behind it was it's uh, everything's red panda in my life it yeah. seems. So I was um, doing an interview there, and I went in to meet the red pandas, and I walk into the red panda holding, and there's a floor tom, which is a type of drum, yeah. just sitting there. And my brain exploded because it was literally my two favorite thing. Yeah. I have red pandas and drums. What is happening? Yeah. And I literally like instantly like stopped the interview and I was like, what, what drum? What that? Why? Why am drum? <laughs> Why drum? <laughs> <laughs> and um, they explained to me that Emily the elephant, uh, when they got her, they found out that she just kind of knew how to and liked drumming. That's... And I don't really know how or why, but so she has drums yeah. and she will like tap on them. And um, her keepers will tap and then they'll like do a little duet, but none of them are drummers. Yeah. And so we came up with the idea of me going and like actually drumming with Emily. And it was unspeakably cool. It's it was putting my two passions together in a way that I never thought I would. I've actually, you know, talked to a lot of people in my life about the fact that I feel like there's almost a conflict now because all I ever wanted to do was be a drummer. Yeah. And then I was, and that was still like, I'm like, now I'm doing the thing. Like yeah. I'm literally living my dreams. And then I discovered this world of conservation and of taking care of animals. And, and I got involved in that. And now I want to be in two places at once. Yeah. And now like, 
I'll go and do an interview and then have to leave right afterwards, you know, the facility I'm at to go play a show. And I'm torn because I want to stay and do the thing more, but I also do really want to yeah, go. And, it, the other thing. and putting it together was insane. And the fact that, you know, I post videos a lot. Yeah. And I have posted videos of, of baby pandas and of, of, you know, just adorable things all the time. And some go mildly viral, some get like 100 likes, you never know, social yeah. media is weird, yeah, you it know. Yeah, it is yes. weird. Um, and that just took off. And I, I can't explain why, other than I think that like, just the fact that it was what it was. It's such a cool video. It was video. so pure, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, that is the only time in my entire like podcasting career that, so I, I did the interviews with the keepers and stuff, yeah. and then I walked away from it and it hit me afterwards. That always happens with me. Yeah. I have the experience, I'm in it, I'm enjoying it, and then afterwards I walk away and that's when the experience hits me. Um, and I, I walked away and the, uh, the PR person I was with was like, great, we're gonna have you talk to another person, do another interview. Um, our associate director is here, she's been here forever, she's amazing. And I walked into the room and she was like, great, you wanna ask me some questions? And I was like, Hold no. on a second. <laughs> I literally said no. I said, I will come back another time and yeah. interview you. I couldn't. My yeah. brain was like fried. Like I was on such a ridiculous high. It was amazing. And yeah, um, between people, so people steal your videos yeah. and post them. Yeah, and they do. Their I, own thing. I actually saw that video I, before I knew you. Mm -hmm. And so like before, as the Science Center, I saw it. And I don't remember where it was, but it wasn't it wasn't Buttonwood Park Zoo. I mean, Quest it, Love shared yeah. it. Like, it was insane. Yeah, yeah Sheila you. E., one of my favorite drummers, shared yeah, it. Yeah, I like, don't remember yeah. who it was, but yeah. I saw it, and I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And right? then I realized, after you had been on the podcast, that that was you. Or that we had that we had been on the podcast, right, right, it right. was you. And I was like... <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I I have had times now where, like, I'm talking to someone, and they're a little hesitant. They're like, well, what's your podcast or whatever? I'm like, oh, by the way, have you ever seen a video of a guy drumming with an elephant? And they're like, yes, that's you. And I'm like, that's me. Yeah. And they're like, amazing. And, and then I'm in. It's really funny. Um, but yeah, like in, in total, between all the different versions that I've seen shared, you know, legally or not, um, I know that it's had over 200 million yes. views, which is yes. so insane and is more eyes than have been on, like, we're on the Super Bowl last yeah. year and stuff. And I'm like, okay. I'm really glad I played well. That's why I said you're kind of famous. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> kind of but, famous. But, but like really glad I played yeah, well, you yeah. know? And I did, I had one drummer, so they're, they're drummers, we like to pick on each other for technique a lot. And um, my pinky came off the stick at one point. I did have one drummer just comment and be like, pinky, and I was like, I would do the same thing. <laughs> that is exactly what I would say to any, yeah, back when I had students, yep, no, 100%, 100%. <laughs> pinky. It's funny, I only, I only drummed a little bit, so I know exactly what you're talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Because uh, I got my, yelled my at it about drummer too. Friend. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got yelled at it too, so uh, I remember those days. I also love that your dog's name is Paradiddle. Yes, and, and I have another one named Flam now. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So, That's and to make it even nerdier, um, their full names, they are, you know, AKC dogs yeah. have like long names. Uh, they're named after Buddy Holly songs oh. that have the rudiments. Yeah. So Peggy Sue, the drummer, plays Paradiddles the entire song. Yeah. So she is Peggy Sue Paradiddle. Oh my God, okay. And then um, in the song Rave On, uh, the drummer plays Flams at one point, mm -hmm. and so it's Rave On Flam. That's amazing. Yes, and we already know that that'll be the day Buzz will be the next one, That's... because the song ends with a big buzz roll. I cannot wait. <laughs> Yeah, whenever you texted me and said, I'm bringing my dog Paradiddle, I was like, oh my God. I, I was talking and I, I had to stop for a moment and just read that. And I had to process that your dog's name was Paradiddle. <laughs> um, all right. So, you know, has I'm sure that it has, but, you know, has your podcast had any, you know, unexpected impacts on your life? Obviously this video. The video, I, I, I almost forget about the video. Uh, because it and, got so big and so crazy yeah. that it felt like it was something that was out of my control. Yeah. And out, like it just, it happened. I remember I was, I was on a walk uh, in, in the woods with, with Paradiddle and with my wife Zoe. And um, my phone, I thought I was getting a phone call because it was blowing up all of a sudden. And um, it was when Questlove uh, posted my video. Yeah. And, and just, and, and I just, I was just on a walk. Was that like cold chill? It was, but it was also like I was on a walk. Yeah. Like I did nothing. Yeah. Nothing. I, that had happened weeks before, and I I was on a walk in the woods with my dog. You know what I mean? So yeah. like it's a very cool thing, but it also very much like feels like it's out of my control. Whereas the podcast stuff feels like it's it's yeah. something I actually yeah. do. Um, the way that it's impacted me is a couple different ways. First of all, 
I have so many friends from this world now. I uh, some of my best friends. I mean, we have become really know, good friends. I like I talk to you every couple of days at least. You know, the officiant of my wedding is a former guest. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and and honestly, most of my favorite people in this world are now people from the podcast. I hope that's uh, the, hmm, hmm. you're getting there. Hmm. Yes. You're getting there. After you bought me coffee today, you, yes. You finally, yeah. Uh, I'll no, keep commandeering I mean, your podcast. It is amazing to me though, like the the depth of friendship that you can build yeah. around a common passion and especially cool experiences. You yeah. know, um, and so. You yeah, know, like a lot of my favorite people are um, are from the podcast. So that's that's an amazing way it's impacted yeah. me. Um, but then also, I've had people reach out to me and tell me that they um, got into the field because they were inspired by the podcast. That's awesome. That they were in a job in the field that they didn't like. And they listened to the podcast, got vibe checks from different places, and got a job there. That's awesome. Um, stuff like that. We've raised thousands of dollars for conservation. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Um, it's it's really cool. And it, it's really amazing that you never quite know what's going to happen or when it's going to happen. I'll get a message from, like, a facility that's like, oh, someone showed up today and said that they drove, like, six hours because they heard us on the podcast. Yeah. You know? And, or, or, um... Well, I don't know, you, you know. said the same thing for us, that you've yeah. had people reach out. And I, we have had people that have, I've seen them comment. Yeah. And, or like on TikTok Live, they're like, I've listened to your episode on the podcast. And I had Kelly on there. And they're like, just listen to your episode on the Rossafari podcast. It's and so, so crazy yeah. to me. That, and, and, but then the other thing that I really love is I've been able to use it to connect people in the industry with each yeah. other. So like, you know, I you know, might have a friend who, who is a, let's say a Tamandua keeper, you know, and, and a new facility is getting a Tamandua and I'm like, Hey, I can connect you guys. You got, you guys want to, you want to be, hey, 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 let's do this. I've got connections. Um, yeah. I mean, literally like with, with the Bintlitz, yeah. um, we were talking with Macy and, and I was like, you know, if you guys decide to go the ambassador route, let me know. I know somebody who has an incredible pair Oh of, yes, of they are. ambassadors. And like, we if, could, you're, you if know, you're thinking of the ones that I'm thinking of, mm -hmm. they are pretty incredible. <laughs> So, um, you know, I, I love being able to hook up those connections and then seeing like the fruits of that labor, having yeah. people reach out and be like, so I talked to this person that you, you, you know, introduced me to, and now we're doing this. Thank you. And I'm like, I impacted the welfare of an animal's yeah. life, you know, that's like awesome. that's really cool. I'm a drummer who has helped with conservation and helped animals lives and like just enriched this community, which is cool because the community enriches me all the yeah. time. You yeah. Know? You know, I think, I think you, you are a drummer, but you're also a conservationist, John. I can call myself that. Now. Yeah. It I has taken can. me a while to get there. I think you um, can. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've slowly, if you go back and ever listen to early episodes, I literally, I'll be asking like a question to a guest and I'll be, they'll explain something. I'm like, yeah, I'm a drummer. What does anything that you just said mean? <laughs> and now I like have to be careful that I don't get too into the weeds so that my listeners don't get like yeah. turned off by it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I totally understand. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, well, you know, speaking of conservation and conservation, as a conservationist, mm -hmm. I know you asked us on the podcast, what is your favorite conservation so, organization? Uh, I'm I sure love, you have a few. I do. I do. <laughs> I have, I have many. Everyone that's ever been on the podcast. No. Um, I actually volunteer for Red Panda Network. Yeah. Um, and so they are my favorites. They are, they're, you know, my favorite animal and also, um, they're really incredible. Uh, conservation yeah, organization. They, they do community-based conservation. And I remember when I first got into this world, I was so confused because they were doing things like replacing stoves in homes in Nepal. Whoa. And I was like, sir, my friend Terrence who works for them, what are you doing? I want to help save pandas. Yeah. I don't really care about people getting better stoves. Sorry. And, you know, the attitude was, was we need to put money towards pandas. Yeah. But the stoves in the houses were causing fires and were burning down oh, wood wow. and were causing. And so by replacing these things and making them better, and also they were really inefficient stoves. So like you would have to cut down, let's say I'm making this number up. Let's say you'd have to cut down two trees a day yeah. just to cook for your family. Yeah. Now you can cut down one tree and cook for two weeks, whatever wow, it is. It's like okay. wildly more efficient. And so you're not going to do as much deforestation. So you yeah. are helping the pan. And I was yeah. like, what? And then I learned about the fact that, you know, um, conservation can't happen on an empty stomach. No. And people, you know, in, in the regions of Nepal, where, where the red panda lives, are poor, yeah. by and large. Very yeah. poor. Very you poor. Know? And um, so if they can kill a panda and sell the pelt, they can eat for a year. Yeah. You know? So you have to educate them on why pandas are important. You have to educate them on how ecotourism works yeah. and show them that they can actually make more money by doing um, homesteading for Red Panda Network eco trips yeah. than they will by selling that pelt. Yeah. You have to do all this stuff to help the humans 
gross, so that you can help the red pandas. I'm kidding about the gross slightly. But like all joking aside, like I learned that from Red Panda Network yeah. and seeing the initiatives that they come up with, uh, it just amazes me. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're doing incredible work. Yeah, incredible and I think work. anytime that there's a conservation organization that is out there coming up with new things. I, I just interviewed Dr. Laurie Marker um, from Cheetah Conservation Fund, yeah. another great organization. Um, episode will be dropping tomorrow. I know this doesn't come out today, but like, yeah. you know, in my world, this is coming out tomorrow and I'm gonna be doing a fundraiser for them. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, we're gonna try and sponsor one or maybe even two livestock guarding dogs. Oh, wow. And if you had told me that there are dogs that will help save cheetahs, my, my little yeah, brain my, wouldn't, right? Yeah, it doesn't my, make sense. I'm like, oh. Right, so what? <laughs> what happens is farmers, kill cheetahs okay because they are predators yeah. and you know they'll come on and they'll eat their goats whatever you know yeah. and so if you get a big dog like an anatolian shepherd that does well outside of the house and is able to live on the property and can sense a predator coming and it starts barking and you're this little cheetah that is made to run rather than attack yeah. and you hear you know woof 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 <laughs> you're gonna take off yeah oh yeah absolutely. and then that cheetah's not gonna get shot and the farmer is going to be okay yeah. and going to have better um, finances and stuff. So they're also not going to then need to like sell a cheetah yeah. pelt, you know, whatever. It all works out. And and again, by you know, that's not something I would have ever thought of. So yeah. any conservation organization that comes up with unique ways to do things, I'm very passionate yeah, about. I, so, yeah, I didn't even realize that, you know, a lot of these organizations are doing that. But I mean, that's the full circle. You mm -hmm. know, you have to impact the world around these animals to be able to actually help them. So that makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. That's... And I love, it, it, it was such a full circle thing for me too, because uh, again, my wife Zoe, she, she um, volunteered, she's a vet, and she volunteered at CCF yeah. uh, in Namibia and got to know Dr. Marker. And so I like fell in love with, with the, the entire organization and, and with uh, Dr. Marker as just an incredible conservationist. And then I got to have her on my podcast That's and share awesome. her story. And now I'm raising money for yeah. them. And as an added bonus, I recorded that episode here because I was here visiting y'all for some episodes. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I was like, I don't know where I'm gonna do this. And you're like, you can have our conference room. And like, so it's just the way it all comes together yeah. and like, like, that's just so cool to me. All of those connections and even just the connection between, you know, Greensboro Science Center and yeah. that episode is so meaningful to me. Yeah. It, it all just makes me well, smile. Well, I didn't realize that we helped. Yeah. I knew that you had to do an interview, yeah. but I wasn't, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, I have one last question Great. for you. All right, so what is the one thing you hope listeners will get from your podcast? That's a big question. That is a big question. Um, there isn't one thing, but <laughs> but one thing that I'm really passionate about that we haven't talked about. Yeah. Because all the conservation, all the animals are great. You know, I, I like to say my my mission statement is connecting people to animals through their people. Yeah. And I, I think that is very important. But the other part of it that we haven't talked about yet is that there's a whole anti-captivity crowd out yes. there. Yes. And yes, there is. it is unfortunate and it is built partially on there being some bad facilities out there, partially on the fact that zoos used to do things in ways that I would not approve of. I would not have had this podcast yeah. a few decades ago. Yeah. Um, and partially just on feelings because we put humans in bars and say, oh, that's prison. And then we see an animal who's very content behind bars and actually feels safe and are yeah. like, prison. Yeah. You know, there, there's a whole lot of just emotion without education yeah. that, that people feel. And I hope that those people will listen to the podcast. I hope they'll give it a chance. I, I Whenever anybody comments an anti-captivity thing on a zoo's page or on my own page, I've been very much attacked by people. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, they attack I mean, us. I had death threats. I had to, Ooh. my phone went off. I had to contact the police. Wow. Like, it's been crazy. Um, but whenever that happens, I try and do my own little test of like, is this a reasonable person to talk to? Yeah. Because some are. Yeah. And other ones are just out to watch the world burn. Um, but if they are, I do. And I, I like to be able to say, look, I don't work for these facilities. Yeah. They are not paying me. I am an independent observer yeah. who gets to go behind the scenes, really see what's happening, really hear what's happening, and like I can sign off on this place. I can tell you that Greensboro Science Center is doing things right. Yeah. I can tell you that there are places that are not yeah. doing things right, you know. But and I, I I want to be able to impact that world and not just have them hear about like, no, no, this is good. The animal's in good shape. Here's how we know that. Here is, you know, we test stress levels in animals now. We we really yeah. know that yeah. they're okay. And here's how. But then also to hear the passion, to hear the passion of a Kelly or a Macy or someone who steals my microphone. <laughs> um, I do have a lot of passion. <laughs> you, you do. Is you it do. for stealing microphones? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, and 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 to hear that, I, I don't know how you can't understand a person and hear their passion and hear their love and and think, oh, that's an evil person just in it to make money. Which also, 
I don't know if I'm honest, this is not a hugely lucrative career. No. But um, I, I, I wish that every anti-captivity person would listen to one episode. Yeah. Because even if they're not going to change their mind, at least come to understand that these are not, these are amazing people. Yeah, they are. My podcast is fueled entirely by the fact that this industry is filled with incredible humans. They are. Passionate humans, loving humans, humans that have to deal with, um, you know, um, so much. There is compassion fatigue every day. Yeah. Animals die. It happens. Yeah. The SSP, which is great, you know, moves animals from facilities. Yeah. Uh, you get attached to these animals that, that leave. I my, mean. Uh, my favorite red panda got moved halfway across the country, and I used to be able to visit oh. with him regularly. And I actually just got to see him the other day because yeah. I was on, you know, you I saw, saw that, my yeah, buddy banned it. But like, I hadn't seen him in 16 months when like he was a regular thing in my life. Yeah. I can't imagine what's that like, what that is like when you do it daily. Yeah. I can't imagine I what that is like when you do it daily. That's insane, you know? It, it can be hard. So there is a lot of hard stuff to it, and they, they persevere because of their passion. Yeah. And I think you hear that every week on the podcast, and I'm really proud of that fact. And I really hope that as it continues to grow, um, more people who, who are anti-captivity will take that into consideration. Because I get it. On the surface, I get why those people exist, and I get why they think like they do. And unfortunately, there's so much misinformation online yep, there now is. There's... that you can read and hear and see stuff and be like, nah, I'm out. Yeah. But it, that's not what's going yeah. on, and I'm here to, to, to provide a voice beyond that and, and really just highlight how amazing these people and animals are. I think what's cool is that, you know, with AZA, specifically, you know, they have changed so much of their, you know, the standards for mm -hmm. the animals, you know, people, people will see, and they'll comment on posts that I make, um, you know, we just had our alligator snapping turtle be moved outside, and people comment on the exhibit that he's down, he's in downstairs, and they say, you know, it's too small for him, but, you know, something that people don't understand is, like, that exhibit is much bigger than it looks, mm -hmm. it's actually bigger than what AZA standards mm -hmm. are for, for these animals, and so, you know, a lot of our exhibits are bigger than what um, you know, these outlines say that they should be. Mm -hmm. and, and those so, are scientifically yeah, based. Like yeah, there's a lot of research science. that goes into it. Yeah. And also, um, yeah, I, I mean, people just, I, I have a, I have a problem. Something that I do that is problematic is if I'm at a facility, I, 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 I like to listen to noise canceling headphones and yeah. music or something because I hear people say things that are just uninformed and I sometimes just can't help myself. Yeah. And like, I remember I was at Adventure Aquarium in Camden, New Jersey, and they were doing a Head Start program for a sea turtle. So here's a loggerhead turtle that probably would not have survived. That is like the size of a saucer. Yeah. And it's swimming around in its little container by itself, right? And this woman, is standing there and she just goes, Ugh, it's lonely. I can tell that it's lonely and sad. It's not even smiling. First of all, sea turtle. They all have resting bee face, let's be honest. <laughs> they do. And, and they do. second of all, it's, 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 it's a sea turtle. Yeah. They're, they, they want to be alone. Yeah. And I, I was walking with my poor wife, who is very shy and very doesn't want to, and, and I just went, hey, Zoe, look at that. That sea turtle is alone because they are a species that does not want friends. And the woman turned and glared at me, and I was like, that was subtle, and just kept walking. I can't help <laughs> myself. But like, that, I get the idea of not wanting an animal to be alone. Yeah. I'd be really sad if I heard that Becca was living alone every day and couldn't talk to anybody. I would be sad. I, right, yeah, I know, but you are not a sea turtle. No, I'm not a no. sea turtle, no, no. no. And so, um, yeah, I, I do tend to, to speak up in those moments sometimes. I think that that's good though. You know, I think that people need ed those that education. You know, we I get a lot of comments, and I'm sure you probably get this too, where our followers will actually educate the people who are. Yes. And I love it. I love seeing each other. You know, and they do it in such a positive most of the time, in such a positive, <laughs> you know, kind way. They're like, hey, you know, here's that's a little bit of misinformation. Here's you know this, mm -hmm. and then I can go on as a science center, and I can be like, yes, what this person is saying is correct, and here's like the science behind it. It. Yeah. And so I, I love that. I love that, you know, people will pop in and then, you know, even if they don't, maybe they don't real, they don't really fully accept it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they do, you know, they're all kind of, they're pretty kind to each other for the most part. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes not. It's the internet. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And you never know the impact that you're going to have. You never know the person that you tell something to who immediately is like, no, you're wrong. You know, yeah. curses galore, you know, F you, you're the worst person in the world, whatever then has that experience three or four times. Yeah. And then maybe, or maybe they just are like, ah, you suck. And then two days later, they're like still thinking about it and they Google it and they will never tell you that. Yeah, they but do. But you never know the change that you've made yeah. on someone's hearts with that kind of thing. Yeah. And it might be none. 
it might be. But I love to remind myself that just because you don't see the impact doesn't mean it's not happening. Yeah. You know, yeah, you got to keep fighting the good fight and, and trying to put out the right information and hopefully it pays off. Well, I think you're, do you're fighting the good fight. You're doing a great job. Appreciate so, that. Well, yeah, thank you so much for having us on your podcast and thank you for taking the time to come here. This has been so much fun. <laughs> and be on my podcast Woo! or I guess our podcast. You it's are the Greensboro Science Center. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, John. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Science Unlocked. Okay, okay, wait. You stole my podcast. I'm stealing yours. Right. Yes, thank you for joining us on Science Unlocked. My name is John Rossi, and you can check out at Rossafari on all social media platforms. Uh, Rossafari.com is our website, and you can listen to the podcast wherever you get podcasts. Thanks, Becca. <laughs> <laughs>